Hello everyone, Josh here with the Dagetic Audio Project. Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Presonus Eris E3.5. They're the entry level series of studio monitors that Presonus manufactures. These come in at a whopping $100, very affordable, but let's get into the technical specifications. These monitors have one stereo eighth inch input, two balanced quarter inch TRS inputs, and then two unbalanced RCA inputs. Today we're gonna to be using the RCA inputs as I don't have the equipment to use the balanced inputs yet. Frequency response of 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which 80 hertz isn't terrible, but it is designed to be used with an eight inch sub. We have an AV class 25 watt amplifier, a low frequency driver of three and a half inches and a high frequency driver of one inch. Now the high frequency driver is large. Normally you would expect something in the half inch to three quarter inch for something in this price point and this size. The max SPL is listed at 100 decibels at six meters and they weigh a whopping 6.4 pounds or 2.9 kilograms. Let's get into it. Instructions, always very important. We have the powered speaker that has all of the electronics in it, and we have the unpowered speaker that is bound to the powered speaker. In the box, it also comes with all of the cords that you need, including your power cord, the RCA cord, six foot speaker wire. Now it does come with foam pads to help with the isolation on the bottom, which we will be using because they are sitting directly on my desk because I don't have any isolation pads to put them on as of yet. But let's take a quick look at the instructions and it has a lovely diagram as how to hook it up. All right, well, let's unwrap these and see what else is here. All right, so one thing I did forget to mention is it does have the three and a half millimeter cord for plugging an iPod in. Um, so let's kind of go over some of the interesting features that it has, and then we will get it set up on the desk. It has a power switch on the front, as well as a volume controller. We also have acoustic tuning, which is something that I did not see from any other speakers in this price range. The high knob boosts or cuts all frequencies above 10 kilohertz by plus or minus six decibels. The low will boost or cut frequencies around 100 hertz by plus or minus six decibels. That gives you a little bit of ability to tune acoustically for the room that you're gonna have it in. So we have the output to right speaker that is your uh, just traditional speaker cable that goes over to the unpowered unit. Uh, they are labeled the power one goes to the left and the unpowered one goes to the right. So let's get them installed. First thing I'm gonna do is install the dampening pads on the bottom of the speakers. Can you guys hear this? I hope you can, listen. All right, let's go install them. And it is that easy. It's literally taken me two minutes to get them installed. Other than the most important thing Plugging them in. And now that we've gotten that taken care of, we are completely done. So it is time to turn these on, listen to something, and see how they sound. Let's pull up one of the last projects I was working on. All right, let's turn them on. That is uh, the revenue it would be like. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And Guillermo, I did watch um, The New World from Ter Terrence Malick. I actually love Terrence Malick movies. They are very they are very hard to sit through and watch sometimes, but... Revenant. Initially just blown away um, for a set of $100 speakers for them to sound that good out of the box. 
Most of my edit work is speech, obviously. If you don't know what that was, that is the Serious Cinema podcast, one of the few podcasts that I produce. So let's see what it sounds like with some music. Um, the one last thing that I want to try is what this whole channel was started around is let's listen to some sound effects. I would say overall these are amazing entry level monitor that you can get for $100 for a home studio. Obviously uh, it does lack in the low end though it is surprisingly full especially when editing voice, which is mostly what I bought them for. In the future, we're gonna be looking at the Aris E8, which is the eight inch subwoofer that goes with these particular speakers. It is designed to go with the Aris model studio monitors. So in the future, look out for that. If you want to see what this channel is all about, click this video. And if you're interested in audio effects, uh, click this one. <laughs>